Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Tennessee, and Virginia. Listen up. Win Bet is now live in all these states, and the excitement of Win Las Vegas has finally landed in online sports betting and casino play. From boosted parlays to live in game offs on every major sport, Win Bet gives you the tools to win. Sign up today for your risk free $1,000 sports bet. Download the Win Bet app now or visit wynnbet.com to start winning. You're listening to the Huddle Up Podcast with Chad Jensen and Zach Kelberman. Join Broncos Country's deep divers at milehighhuddle.com and sound off. And now it's time to drop some knowledge. Welcome in, everybody. It is the Huddle Up Podcast presented, as always, by Mile High Huddle and powered by Blue Wire Podcast. I'm your host, Chad Jensen. With me is the producer-in-chief, Scott Kennedy, as Zach has taken a night off. Scott, bro, you reminded me. You were the one that brought it up. You said, right before we went live, Chad, this is the first time it's just you and I on a podcast. And even though mm-hmm. we've been on like a three-way pod with you, myself, and Zach. Mm-hmm. So what an auspicious debut for the Chad and Scott show what's up bud you know just another day in paradise it was about a year ago it was about when i made my debut on this channel yep. talking first round draft picks and this was before free agency and and i asked you i said well who what are the needs and i'll tell you who the players are and you're like corner something something and corner i'm like all right well pat sertan's your guy that's your guy <laughs> that's right. yeah and then uh I guess uh, I, it was in agreement enough that you went and signed two corners and still drafted Pat Sertan. Mm-hmm. So that's how good Pat Sertan was. Is there another guy like that at nine this year? Maybe. Mm. Maybe. Well, on this podcast, we have a uh, bona fide draft expert in Scott. He went to the Senior Bowl, got an up-close look at all those great prospects, and he was ear to the floor on all the scuttlebutt that we're going to get to here in just a minute. But Scott, as we kick off tonight's live stream pod, I wanted to get your take on a few things. Broncos general manager, George Payton told it's very unusual for this to even come up, but he gave some time to the Denver Broncos team site, Eric Delala, and he addressed the status as it were of multiple Bronco free agents, starting with, linebacker duo Josie Jewell and A.J. Johnson, and I'll paraphrase it here. Uh, He said, I like both of them. The coaches have to watch them. I think it's a pretty good draft class. There's some guys here I really like, so it's kind of in flux because we could potentially sign Josie back, A.J. back, and then you have some younger guys in the mix with Browning, Baron Browning, and Jonas Griffith and some of the other guys that we have, close quote. Now, uh, Zach, Scott, this is been called worse. I promise you that. I'm sure you have, but this isn't like some kind of, you know, um, authoritative, here's what we're going to do, but this is a step in the direction of, no, 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 even though they're both injured, we have an interest in bringing back one of, if not both, Joel and Johnson. Your thoughts? First off, you always say good things about the players that run your team. Always. General Manager 101. Uh, You don't bad talk anybody else, Um, and you know, and you at worst, you might say, you know, AJ might price out of our market. That would be about the worst you would hear a general manager say about a former anybody. You know, Vic Fangio's leaving. Thank you for everything you did for us. We loved having you here. Good luck and everything. You know, maybe you want him back. You're going to hear positive things. So basically, you can't really say anything there. Um, now, What's the speculation on this? You know, I was incredibly impressed with Jonas Griffith last year, where where he came from and the physical tools that he brings and the size. Uh, I like one of the two veterans. I think Josie Jewell was playing a little bit better last year. And I think he might be a little more willing to stick around Denver where Alexander Johnson is, you know, I can still get a big pay- contract somewhere else. I don't think Josie is going to make the same kind of money that, that Alexander Johnson is on the open market. Right. He might be a little bit more willing to come back. And you remember one of the other things they said last year towards the tail end of the season was how impressed they were with Josie being there every day mm-hmm. to work with the linebackers, the young linebackers, and, and the growth that he had. I think that was uh, that maybe Kenny that, it, that was saying that last year, um, mm-hmm. you know, what a big help he's been. So I expect one. I don't expect both of them back. Right. 
Listen up, Broncos country. TickPick should be your first choice to buy football tickets because they save fans money by never charging any service fees ever. TickPick is the exclusive ticketing partner for the Huddle Up podcast and the Blue Wire Network. Denver Broncos football is finally back, and there's no need to exhaust yourself searching all over the internet to find Broncos tickets anymore because TickPick, that's T I C K. P-I-C-K is the original no-fee ticket site and the only one you'll ever need as your go-to for all NFL tickets. TickPick got rid of all those awful service fees that the other ticket sites charge, which lets them guarantee the best prices on all of their NFL tickets. Don't believe it? If you can find better prices for the same seats on another ticket site, TickPick will give you 110% of the difference in the purchase price. That's right, guys. When we were searching for tickets for the MHH meet and greet for week three at home, Broncos versus Jets. Tick Pick had us locked down. So visit TickPick.com slash huddle today and use the promo code huddle to save $10 on your first order of Broncos tickets. Yeah, you figure that Alexander has a little bit more of a higher ceiling in terms of earning potential. And honestly, it's like you just referenced that story that we learned that even though he was injured, even though that you know he was tore up and couldn't participate on the field, he was there mentoring that young room and you know what as much as we might want to credit Reggie Herring the linebackers coach who Nathaniel Hackett said thanks but no thanks for the emergence of Browning down the stretch the emergence of Jonas Griffith maybe there's a lot more there to kind of tip our cap for Josie Jewell Unc Shea we have a debut super chat from across the pond Mm-hmm. I love seeing this appreciate that my friend he says hey guys I'm just showing some love from Germany I actually live in Frankfurt, home of the former Galaxy. So excited for the NFL to play a game in my city. Hashtag Denver Broncos for life. Well, Ank Shea, welcome. Appreciate you, my friend. Make sure you reach out and connect with us on Twitter. And uh, it's really great, Scott, to see how how far-reaching the uh, tentacles of Broncos country really is. You know, I, I think that's one of my favorite things about the Broncos for Breakfast show is the overseas guys that are coming in at lunchtime for them and Cambodia, England, Germany. Uh, and and we see the the sweet I've seen Sweden come through this pod before. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we've seen a lot of, you know, south of the border from Mexico, Brazil, all kinds of things. So what's the line? I'm going to tee you up. What do we say about Broncos country? Baby, it is not a geographic location. It's a state of being. That's what it is. It's wherever you are. All right. Well, UNC, I don't know if it's UNC or UNC. UNC, <laughs> in my neck of the woods down in the south here, that's UNC Tar Heels. UNC Shea, appreciate you. I am uh, I can't wait to get over to Germany. I'm actually a huge soccer fan. Most most folks know that. And I want to go actually to, uh, I want to see Dortmund. I want to see Borussia Dortmund. I want to go see that yellow and black wave there for sure. So I almost, can't wait to get over there. I've been all over Europe, but I've not been to Germany. Scott, when you brought up soccer, you have no idea how badly I was resisting nodding off to sleep just barely. For just real. By saying I'm, it, I'm, saying I'm, I guarantee you, if I took you to a Borussia <laughs> Dortmund game, you'd have fun. You're probably right. I you'd keep being fun. told I need to get out to a pro soccer game somewhere, some football, as the Europeans would call it. Rod TV. Appreciate you, my friend. Thank you. It's great to see you. Been with us a long time as a super chat superstar. He says, if we get Aaron Rodgers and want to win now, I would love for us to get a veteran corner like Stefan Gilmore to pair with Sertan. Scott, I don't know how much uh, you spent kind of watching Gilmore last year, but your thoughts on Gilmore and then there's this kind of triggered a topic I want to bring up relative to A-Rod. I did, well, last year when Gilmore was cut, I knew he was from South Carolina. He's like from Rock Hill, South Carolina, which is right close to Carolina Panthers. Carolina Panthers were off to a good start. So when Gilmore is cut, you've got a team that's close to home who is winning. You only need two of those three for a winning team and an opportunity where you can pick up guys like Gilmore. Um, you can pick up guys like OBJ who goes to goes and plays uh, you know half a season for the Rams on a song. If you've got a winning, if the players believe that I got a chance to win a ring, they're willing for that short-term deal. The Patriots may have made a living on it. Now they've they've signed more veteran free agencies for low money deal free agents for low money deals than anybody. Right. Because hey, I want to go play with Tom Brady for a year. Maybe I can get a ring. So you get Aaron Rodgers, you got a chance to you got a chance to to 
bring in some guys like that who are coming off one of your deals who might want to come in and see if I can be part of something special for a season towards the tail end of my career and still have something to contribute. On the subject of Aaron Rodgers, he attended, uh, I forgive me, I forget what the actual benefit pro-am, whatever it was, but golf tournament in uh, Arizona. And there was a gaggle of Broncos fans hollering after he would swing. Hey, come to Denver. Come to Denver, Aaron. <laughs> and there's the a boat really travels a mile high. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Another 20 yards on your drive up here. Dude, there's a video going around of him teeing off. And then you hear, come to Denver, Aaron, come to Denver. And then the subtext of the tweet says, and then Aaron says, we'll see. But if you actually watch the video, unless there was someone there reporting, that's what they heard Aaron say. I don't know. But in the video, you hear the calls for Denver. You definitely don't hear Aaron Rodgers say a damn word. But (laughs) be that as it may, maybe he did say it at another time or someone close as a reporter was, you know, passing it on. But. Nevertheless, it feels like Aaron is kind of doing his part to keep that A-Rod to Denver possibility, the rumor, keeping that thread alive. Options are good. Having options are good, especially in a sport like this. Someone must have just come in with huge stars because I just my my whole my whole screen just went crazy over here. So we'll have to see as I scroll down. All right. Um but uh he he wants to keep his options open. Absolutely, he's not just closing any doors. I mean, that's just that's just not good business. It'll be interesting to see how uh, how it shakes out. We got Travis Tarbox in the house. Appreciate you, big dog. He says, "Evening, fellas. Just my thoughts on the ownership situation. I hope whoever the new owner is, they love the Broncos as much as Mister Bolin did, and puts them in the best position to get back to winning Denver Broncos for life." So, on that topic, you know, last time we were on was. Uh, Monday night, yesterday, Tuesday, news broke that, and it kind of feels like the NFL is asserting this cat. And by the NFL, I don't just mean Roger Goodell, but owners like Robert Kraft around the league asserting Byron is Byron Allen, Byron Allen, uh, who is black and he's a former stand up comic that became a very, very wealthy, for lack of a better term, media tycoon, media mogul. However, Scott, as I did my research writing up the official Bloomberg um, article reporting that his statement to his intention to make a bid on the Broncos, I'm like, what's this cat worth? Because I was like literally typing it up. Billionaire, you know, that that was like my rough headline before I published. And I'm like, I better go verify what this cat's worth because Bloomberg makes no mention of it. I go look it up. Best estimate from some of those like ridiculous, you know, celebrity uh, net worth sites or whatever, 450 million, which, hey, it's a lot of lettuce to to the average Joe, but relative to the 10 percent down payment. Yeah, exactly. The Broncos are expected (laughs) to sell for somewhere around four billion dollars. So he would need to come up with 10 times what his net worth is. But then he put out a statement today through Mike Kliss of Nine News. And then I want to serve this over to you, Scott, that basically said, look. This is America. One thing America, I'm paraphrasing, does not have in short supply is money. There's plenty of people out there. I'm going to put together some investors to join me on this bid. So he's going to kind of be the majority owner, I would assume, in this scenario. But he's black. He's funny. That's good, right? He's got a sense of humor. And it sounds like he has a genuine desire to throw in with the NFL uh, as an owner. Yeah, as far as... You know, there's there's money to go around. You don't have to have all that money. You can find somebody, you know, if I'm willing to put up half a billion dollars of my own as collateral, so to speak, you know, it's like a house loan. You know, if I'm dropping 5%, I can get the rest from the bank. Now, there's banks out there that can come up with that kind of money that would love. Banks don't like risk. But the thing is, an NFL franchise isn't much risk. It's a, It's an appreciating asset. So if you can get in, you're, you, it's a safe bet, even if the bank has to auction the thing off in a couple of years. But you let me know the 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 next the next owner that goes bankrupt, th- that'll be news to me. You know, when we talk about when owners talk about, hey, we lost sixty million dollars this year, they talk about losing that from profit. That means we only we we only made four hundred million this year instead of four hundred and sixty like we did last year. So they report that as we lost sixty million dollars. So Byron Allen's exactly right. If I've got 
enough to get my foot in the door, I can get the help to get this done. Check out his actual comment to Bloomberg. Quote, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell and New England Patriots owner Robert Kraft came to me in November of 2019 and asked me to take a good look at buying an NFL team. Allen, chairman and chief executive officer at Allen Media Group, said in a statement in response to inquiries about his interest in the Broncos, quote, and after serious consideration, I strongly believe I can effectuate positive changes throughout the league. And for that reason, I will be making a bid for the Denver Broncos. Now, he would, if successful in his bid, and that's a big if. I, I know the NFL is going to try and grease the wheels in his direction. Mm -hmm. uh, as Roger, I mean, just reading between the lines of what Roger Goodell said today about it. But, um, you know, he wouldn't be, he would be the first black owner in the NFL, which would be a great development overall. I love it. But it's a misnomer to say he would be the first minority owner. Mm -hmm. because shot Shad Khan. So your thoughts on uh, the idea of, of Goodell and Robert Kraft coming to him with hatching a plan to, you know, get in on this uh, NFL business. Well, the whole thing when we talk about, you know, minority coaches and all this type of stuff is, well, when you run a monopoly, what's the first word in monopoly? Mono it means one. Mono, monomonopoly, monochromatic. It's a billionaire boys club, without a doubt. It's a closed league. It's basically illegal if you break it right down. I mean, the, the antitrust thing, yeah, they got found guilty of antitrust once and they had to pay a dollar for it. But it's they've got enough money and power and influence to basically run a monopoly in this country, which I said, like I said, is, is basically illegal. So it is it's a fraternity and it's it's anti-American. You know, so they're having to step outside of their billionaire boys club and who they've been comfortable with in order to change the optics a little bit. Now, Chad, I know you don't care, but what would be really nice if there was an actual merit based system where people could earn their way into this league instead of buying their way into this league. But that's not what this uh, that's not what this league's all about. I like this guy, though. I actually went back and uh, did some research on him as a comedian. And, you know, he had multiple appearances on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson back in the day. So he's an intriguing he's an intriguing option. And uh, here's how I look at it. The whole earning it thing. Look, if the dude was innovative and hardworking enough to uh, scratch together four hundred fifty million on a media empire, <laughs> I, and that gives him a foot in the door to potentially buy an NFL team. Hey, man, sweat off your brow. That put you in position to become an NFL owner. You know, more power to you type thing. But he's going to have to ice out, at, at, from what we've heard in reports, six to seven other buying groups interested in swooping in on this. Yeah, and when I say earn it, again, try grab some coffee or something real quick. But in, in other leagues in this world, you and I could start a team and we could earn our way by winning – Right. into the top league we could earn our way by winning into the top league you can't do that in the nfl and uh it's a, it's a it's a it's a buyer way in once i'm in it doesn't really matter what i do as long as i don't embarrass the league i can lose 20 straight years uh i don't have to have much ambition and like i said that's that that really rubs me the wrong way and you know and then we're gonna we're gonna reward you for losing and then you wonder why stories come out that hey you need to lose this game. Right. So well, you're incentivizing losing. What do you expect people to do? Well, and it sounds like Scott, just based on the, I mean, I know that all Roger Goodell was doing was answering questions that were fielded to him by the media scrum at the Super Bowl. But um, it sounds like if there is some veracity to Brian Flores claims and by veracity, I mean any evident evidentiary trail whatsoever 31 other NFL owners are going to go ahead and vote him out of the league. And that can be done. According to Goodell, you can be 86 by your fellow brethren. Mm -hmm. It's a league. It's, it's, it's a uh, fraternity. It's a, it's the billionaire boys club. I mean, it, it absolutely is. And uh, again, some diversity and some, some different, some diversity would be wonderful. Would would be wonderful in that, and not not just this, but in anything. You know, the group think is it's dangerous. You know, I've said for years. I think that the that that the NFL has reached critical mass, where they just for a while just started taking their audience for granted. Um, 
maybe they haven't because the NFL still keeps getting bigger. But, you know, if you keep doing enough things that make people mad, you'll you'll lose some traction to some people. And Kevin coming in with a, with a big super, we'll appreciate it. And there's actually one coming in from Wyatt because I'm going I'm to piggyback right on that one after this. Uh, getting back to some of the free agent talk. It says, uh, Browning and Griffith are a must. Outlaw Josie played his best ball before his injury this past year. He's a smart player. Again, even as, and you can't have too many of these guys, don't get me wrong, but even as a mentor to some of these young guys. Uh, right. Yesterday on Broncos for Breakfast, we talked about, and then actually Carl brought it up again last night. On the coaching staff, there's a lot of first-time guys on this coaching staff that makes me a little nervous, a little bit. makes me a little nervous. Yep. Yeah, you want some youth and some energy and all that kind of stuff, but did you tilt the balance too far the other direction from the old curmudgeon um, guys that are, you know, lifers? We'll see. We'll see. So I like the youthful linebacking core that we saw starting to blossom last year, but having a guy like Josie come in, <laughs> and be the old head for not a ton of money, I think is yeah. a really, really good idea. Uh, appreciate you, Kevin, with the super coming in. You get, you get a little player and coach combined mm-hmm. in Josie Jewell. And the upside, if it's the right production on the field to that, can be tremendous. Like Teddy Bridgewater, for example. You know, he doesn't get a lot of credit on the Huddle Up podcast. And, you know, we could we could go down the roads of why that might be. But the one thing I won't take away from Teddy is – he wasn't one of those well-paid vets. And by well-paid, I understand his contract. The Broncos took on that portion of it. Didn't make him. He wasn't even in the top 15 highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL. But a, a veteran making 10 times as much as the next guy on his depth chart, most quarterbacks, established names in the league, Scott, they're not going out there and trying to, uh, as Joe Flacco would say, you know, help the, the guy behind me get take my job. I'm not going to teach him the things I know. But <laughs> Teddy did just that for yeah. Drew uh, and for Brett Rippon. Anytime Drew Locke was asked about Teddy Bridgewater, he just gushed. And he would gush. You could tell it was a genuine respect and a genuine appreciation. And the only unfortunate aspect to that, Scott, was the congruency. There was no – it didn't correspond, per se, to the field in terms of results. And that's why – Teddy Bridgewater is unlikely to be playing ball in Denver uh, here in the near future. But uh, Wyatt says, Jewel, in my opinion, for the vet that need Jewel, in my opinion, for the vet that needs to be back, better linebackers, uh, a better linebacker, one of the most underrated players on the team, a true leader on defense and the team. Hashtag Broncos and Hawkeyes. He definitely took a big step forward, Scott, last year in those few games he played for the Broncos before he got hurt. It was looking like he Maybe he had turned a corner, but it was such a small sample size, it's hard to really hang your hat on that. Yeah, and you talk about the competition. It's like, oh, well, Teddy Bridgewater was great until he played somebody, um, you know, the first three games of the season. So was that Jewel? You know, I don't think so because the speed, I was coming into the season, you know, blank slate. You know, I, I'd never watched Josie Jewel play football. You know, call it ignorance or anything. Like, why are we listening to this guy then? Well, because give me a game. And what I saw was what I heard is, okay, he's a good north-south guy, run plugger. He'll do a job. What I saw was a guy that could get out to the flats, and his lateral quickness was definitely underrated. And I was like, huh, y- y- y'all have something here. I don't I don't know why he's been talked down. He's really good. Uh, he can get out in coverage. He can, he can uh, protect the edge, get to the corners, and make sure you're taking out that sweep or the, anything like that. And then, and then he goes down. And, and that hurt for sure. But um, thank you for the stars and Shane coming in saying, good evening, Scott and Chad, or Chad and Scott. Outside of quarterback, is there anyone in free agency you would target for an immediate upgrade for the team outside of signing our free agents, of course? I'd go right tackle. That, that I'd look at right tackle and I'd look at edge. I think you might be able to go right tackle. Now, uh, when I'm in the background and Chad brings up the right tackles, I'm always screaming, Look at the left tackles too, because these guys don't know how to classify them. <laughs> right, that's <laughs> and, true. Uh, so look at the offensive tackles. Look at all of them, and not just the right tackles, because there might be six or seven of them. But I went through an entire list, and half the guys that were listed as left tackle play right tackle. And if you get a guy that's not quite good enough to start at left tackle for somebody, he might be a decent right tackle. So I'd look at tackle. I'd look at edge. Um, there's a there's a kid in Pittsburgh, I believe. His name's Chucks. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. We'll have to 
Uh, I'll have to look it up in a second. But he was like 25, 26 and had a really good year this year. Uh, I would imagine he's in. He might get one of those tenders or or something like that. But as far as young guys, that might be one I'd look at pretty quickly. But uh, I, I think right tackle. My question with George Payton last year was, could you have done any better? You know, it's nice to have a bunch of salary cap room. But if you're not going to spend it and you've got a hole, why? Why do you have a hole? Why do you still have a hole at right tackle when you've got all this money? Um, and there were answers. There, there were. There were answers for that. But uh, that's that's where I'd go. I think that'd probably be the easiest place to upgrade in free agency is right tackle. The one name that I still am intrigued about, and I don't know what the latest is on his, you know, does he still want to keep playing football? He spent all of 2021 out of the league. That's Mitchell Schwartz, right? The Chiefs cut him. Uh, let me see. Chiefs cut him in March of 2021. After he had, was it back surgery, Scott? I want to say, I th- I'm pretty sure it was late, late in the uh, football season. Or, you know, I think it was like January. He had uh, back surgery anyway, but he, you know, licking his wounds, recovering out there. You're talking about as good as it got for about five years in the NFL, right tackle. If he's still in football shape, if he still wants to keep playing, I'm picking up the phone. I'm calling Mitchell Schwartz to see what's up. Uh, Wilson the Ghost, that's a newer name on Super Chat. Maybe not the very, very first time, but welcome. Appreciate you. Do you believe, says Wilson the Ghost, there's one single free agent signing that George Payton could target that elevates our team to a playoff caliber? No, I do not. Scott? A single free agent signing? Um, no, because I don't think there are quarterbacks out there. You know, that's that's the one spot. It's, it's Chuck Sakura for 24 years old. 1,000 snaps, two sacks with an immobile statue of a quarterback. And that doesn't mean that Ben Ben Roethlisberger can't get rid of the ball quickly. And historically, he's been tough to sack. But 24 years old, 1,000 snaps, two snaps, two sacks at right tackle. Yeah, that's my guy. That's Uh, my guy. Travis Tarbox says, Chad, you're definitely one of the priests, no doubt. I got to give it to Scott being a Falcons guy. I had my doubts, but he's definitely won me over. Scott is a... uh, football guy that's what scott is you know scott is uh he's he's a legend in in uh mile high huddle already and he's only been in mile high huddle the community for what as you mentioned scott about a year now but scott was kind of my boss guys for a long time kind (laughs) of i mean it's not it it doesn't exactly work like that when it was a nice symbiotic relationship i once had one of the guys like you chad say because i was like my job was to make sure that chad was successful Right. That was my job. So in, in that state of mind, I thought, you know, I'm basically working for him. Um, yeah, but, but without somebody say to me, you're, you're responsible. Said, I'm not your boss. It was, it was Brooks. Brooks Austin. He goes, I go, dude, I'm not your boss. And he goes, could you George kick me Brown. off the network? I said, yeah. And he goes, well, then you're my boss. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but Scott is, you know, MHH probably wouldn't be on the sports illustrated slash fan nation network without Scott. So anyway, uh, Tommy drew Locke and use picks to build a team. This is not a strategy that uh, I find repugnant. I can get into this. Now, look, I'm not saying that that should necessarily be plan A, because as long as Aaron Rodgers is dangling out there, Scott, as a possibility, I think it's incumbent upon, especially now that Nathaniel Hackett is your head coach, it is incumbent upon George Payton to see that through to the bitter end. Barring an Aaron Rodgers, miracle kyler murray's not going anywhere guys barring an aaron Rodgers miracle they looking at this quarterback class there's some intriguing guys there but they're all very similar to drew lock circa 2019 where there's a lot of things about them that you like but they also have a lot of warts there there, there's no one guy that's really shining as that you know give you the warm and fuzzies in the stomach guy uh in the first round and so unless that evaluation changes for me anyway, you miss on Aaron or Aaron stays in Green Bay, whatever. I'm all about, hey, use your five top 100 picks in this draft. Go finish building this team. Go all in on the upside of Drew being unlocked, pun pun intended, intended. by Nathaniel Hackett. So I'm on the back end of these conversations a lot, and I'm usually yelling into the microphone that's muted saying a couple of things. So I'm going to get the chance to make a couple of points on this one. One, Drew Locke's got one year left on his contract. 
What if Drew Locke says, I don't, you know, I have a good season and you know what? I've had enough. I want a fresh start somewhere. There's that risk. The other risk is Drew Locke has to make a quantum leap to become a, a, a good NFL quarterback, a quantum leap. He hasn't been there by any stretch of the imagination. The talk this year is like, well, he would play really well down the stretch, you know, in his four starts. No, no, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't turn the ball over. He threw one touchdown in four games. He didn't get an interception. And all of a sudden, our standards have dropped so low for quarterback play in Denver that we're building that up to something that it wasn't. Probably true. It wasn't. Uh, and finally, the uh, – you know, as far as as true lock goes, those are the the two the two main ones I had, and I've got a third one here somewhere. And then the the, the talking about uh, T man coming in, I'll read his super, and it'll come back to me. So, what about starting lock next season and drafting a quarterback in the second round and draft a QB in the first round next year? Hmm. Uh, I I, uh, I like Desmond Ritter in this type of scenario. Um, the Cincinnati quarterback that has really nice, uh, good feet, ran for twenty one hundred yards <clears throat> in his career. Uh, good mobility, nice arm, little erratic. That's okay. Um, so I think that would be if he's around in the third and you grab him and you let him develop, best man win, give him a year. But again, the problem is if you run with Drew Locke, there's no guarantee that even if he plays well, he, that he wants to resign. You may be able to figure out ways to keep him around. But you're not going to franchise the guy. You're not going to put a $25 million tag on him. No way. No. So there are so many risks right now at quarterback and so many questions at quarterback. That's why you hear me get very passionate talking about if you can get Aaron Rodgers for a reasonable, yeah. even somewhat unreasonable price, you do it. Well, you know, then there's, you know, then we're right back here in four years. So, so what? You, you might be crappy for four years and still be right there in four years. With, with yep. a, a legit quarterback, it's a known. It's as close to a known quantity as you're going to get in this game. Yes. So, so many parallels, honestly, to Aaron Rodgers and Peyton Manning, not just because of where he's currently at in his NFL career, but like, you know, in terms of possibly moving on to another NFL team. But because, you know, Peyton was known as the quarterback that couldn't win the big one. Mm -hmm. And then he finally got the big one. And then, I mean, he was a guaranteed playoff berth every year, just like Aaron is. But for a long time after that, Colts just couldn't get over the hump from 2006 through 2011. And it's very similar with Rodgers. And yet Peyton kept stacking the accolades, right? Four MVP awards he won as a Colt. Just kept stacking it, just like Aaron is. Something about the Denver Broncos, there's just a magic. There's just a juice about this organization. I don't have really much doubt that if Aaron came here, especially it'd be like putting on an old pair of shoes that you wore for the last three years because Nathaniel Hackett's here, dude. It's like, hey, pick up where we left off. Let's go. Only fresh start. You're in a new football environment. You got new fans. You're going against new divisional opponents twice a year. Like everything is new and that can really lift a guy as we saw it do for Peyton Manning. I mean, look, Peyton was good. Don't, I mean, he was hall of fame. Good. If he would have never come to Denver, he was still going to the hall of fame, all that stuff. But from 2012 through 14, and I know 15, he fell off and won the super bowl, but 12, 13 and 14, that three year window alone, I mean, go look at his stats, guys. Just be a box score uh, scout for just a second on this topic. He was more prolific. He didn't have a more prolific three-year window than that in his entire career. And I think that, you know, fresh start aspect, the organization as the, the Broncos are and the kind of juice and magic that that conjures, it did something to lift him. And I don't have any, very many doubts at all, Scott, barring health. The same could happen if Aaron Rodgers landed here, but so many ifs. So many ifs. This isn't, hey, let's go out compete all other comers with just the best offer to a quarterback. You have to get the Packers to sign off, and that's going to be a tall, tall task. Yeah, it's not just recruiting one guy. It's it's convincing them. That's why I say it's got to be reasonable. Um, you know, the report, oh, four, four first-round picks. Well, that's impossible anyway. You're not allowed to trade four years into the future anyway. So you only have three to trade three is too much for me. I wouldn't give up three first round picks. Even if I knew I was going to get him for three years and I could start over in, uh, in one year, 
um, if I could start over, like I'd get him for three years, and then I, as soon as he retires, I got my first round pick. Then I draft my quarterback. That's still too rich for me. Now, two first round picks and maybe throw in something here. Yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd seriously, ser- very seriously consider that. Uh, Leaf coming in, saying good evening, everyone. I'm stoked to catch a live show. Well, we're glad you're here and see you two together. It, you know, Chad and I have never been in the same room together. I've known Chad for going on 10 years i don't think we've ever been in the same room together that, that's going to change this year a uh, very cool question peyton seems to do what he says and was talking up the big guys in this draft who do you think he's got his eyes on assuming we keep our picks top three assuming we keep our picks oh you could upgrade right tackle in a hurry you know people say is there a right tackle you're not drafting for right tackle at nine you're drafting best tackle and he might play right tackle and he might shift over to left tackle depending on what you do um with your left tackle, all Jake Matthews and Josie Jewell are the only guys that come. Bowles, thank you. Garrett Bowles. There you go. Depending on, depending on what you do with Garrett Bowles, you draft best tackle, and then you put your best two tackles on the field. So uh, Charles Cross from Mississippi State could be there. Trevor Penning, Northern Iowa, is a guy. Bolzian, a Bolzian bully. Could end up in that spot at right tackle. Uh, if Ike McQuanu slides down. Um, Evan Neal probably won't, I can probably won't either, but you've got a chance to upgrade the right tackle position in a hurry. Uh, and again, it's like, well, you don't want to spend that high a pick on a right tackle. No, no, no. Cross out of your mind. You're spending it on a young offensive tackle. That's okay with me. Uh, appreciate the question, Leaf. I, I mean, you're Josh edge guys. Because I told you my screen, I've got a second screen over here where I keep a look on, uh, on Facebook. And it blew up. It showed like rainbows and stuff all over the place over here. It was from Mr. Mice. It was it was Joshua Mice coming in with 4,465 stars. Boom. That's the Boom. biggest one I can remember in a while, Chad. Joshua, you're a legend. Appreciate you, big dog. And I also, just real quick, it's not stars. I just want to shout out Lane Meyer on, on Facebook. Appreciate the, uh, the love, my dog. Question here from Nathan. Uh, and thank you for that super chat, my friend. Any chance we get an MHH at Radio Row the next time Denver's in the Super Bowl? Take some uh, political greasing of the wheels to get that done. But on that topic, without betraying too much, uh, you there's a chance you could get a version of MHH on Radio Row at next year's Super Bowl. Uh, I don't know how much I should say on this, but the network, the site, our site is on, all right? Uh, the topic has been broached. I'll just leave it at that. I'm not all that interested in doing it, to be frank with you, but if they wanted me to do it, I'd go do it. Um, but what we are going to be doing for show, Rodney, you demand, good to see you. Thank you for the stars. And also Michael Ronquillo. Um, what we are doing for sure is the meet and greet at the 2022 NFL draft in Las Vegas. As it gets a little bit closer, we will be unveiling the specific details, but the plan is, to uh, rent a conference room at one of the hotel casinos close to the action, if not the very hotel casino where the action's taking place and uh, hang out basically like a tailgate outside the tailgate, like we did at the Bronco game in uh, week three this past season. So, Hey, if you're anywhere in the near vicinity of Vegas, start making plans and it'd be great to see guys like Dennis Woods uh, hopping on an airplane from Michigan, flying into sin city. We got legends that came from all over, not only the Fruited Plains, Scott, but like Hawaii. We had people come from Mexico for the meet and greet. We had people come from Europe. It was really, really cool at the the actual Bronco game. But one of the big draws there wasn't just us. Yeah, they got to come see us, and that was rad. But then the side benefit was they got to go to the game. So this one would be a little bit different in in that, you know, you're coming to see us. We want to see you, though. So, Dennis, appreciate you, big dog. So speaking of Rodgers. When would you guess a transaction might be made before free agency, before the draft? Um, Probably, I mean, I remember the Joe Flacco thing from 2019. If I'm not mistaken, it was like end of January, beginning of February that a report broke. It might have been right after the Super Bowl. I'm trying to remember the logistics, but it was seriously, if not tail end of the NFL season, you know, playoffs and all that. The like first week after the Super Bowl is within that window. Reports Broncos have an agreement in principle with Baltimore, fourth round pick. They're going to bring Joe Flacco. So it could be sooner than you might think. But at worst, Scott, it's probably the longest would be draft time, you know, approaching the draft, but kind of circle the new league year. 
Rodgers has said he wants to do it before free agency out of respect to both the Packers and his good friend Devontae Adams. So it'll help him make a decision. So again, him saying, I want to go makes it easier, but it still doesn't mean it's going to happen. <laughs> right. the, the Packers still have to say, okay, we're going to let him go. Here's what it's going to cost you. And then the Broncos or another team would have to say, yeah, we're willing to pay that. Uh, Michaela, come in. Appreciate you being patient on here, Michaela. The Duchess. Um, normally when I see red, I go straight to red for sure. Uh, but uh, this one took me a little bit longer to get to. Wanted to spread some love to the family, and we appreciate it. I wouldn't mind him as our owner, getting back to the Byron uh, Byron Allen talk, even though it would be nice to have Peyton, Mile High, high, mile high Huddle, forever. Um, again, it, it'd be – I don't think I – I can't say again because I don't think I, got, I, I made this point, but it'd be interesting. It'd be more fun to have somebody that isn't just looking at the Broncos as a line on a spreadsheet. I mean, mm-hmm. some spreadsheets get awfully big, and I know you're talking about $5 billion, but when you're talking about Liberty Media, you know, I'll throw it back to baseball. Uh, Liberty Media owns the Braves, and I they don't care. They don't care. They hire yeah. people that care, which is good. But, you know, they're – I guess it's better than having, you know, the Daniel Snyders of the world. Uh, but it, it would be fun to have somebody that bought into it because – they were passionate about it and not just because it's sure billions worth it's a sure billion dollars of profit yeah. which you know that's nice also i mean here's the thing bronco fans have been spoiled uh since 1984 you know pat bolin 84 through i'll just say 2015 cuz then you know he stepped down as active go- going into the building every day in 2014 so he had a you know he had a good uh good run there and we were spoiled because he this was all he cared about you know he made a bunch of money in his life before the league and when he got into the league all he cared about was competing and winning world championships and he also cared about the league itself you know he was one of the reasons he's in the hall now and it sucks that it happened posthumously but one of the reasons why not just because of how successful his franchise was but the role he played in the advancement and proliferation of the NFL becoming a 12, 13, $14 billion annual nut, uh, and basically completely taking over and consuming the pro sports landscape on media. He played a big role in that. Those are big shoes to fill if you're Byron Allen or if you're Peyton Manning or if you're John Elway or any you know, uh, face of the whatever buying group comes in, and it's probably going to be a group that ends up buying the Broncos. Um, so high, high standards, Scott, high expectations. I don't know enough yet about Byron Allen to be able to tell you what's uh, in this man's heart and soul relative to his ambitions for the Broncos, but it sounds like just, just based off his public facing posture that he's got, that his heart's at least in the right place. Well, and you don't mess with, unless you plan on making or keeping or promoting the team, you don't mess with people's sports teams. You know, you're, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you just, you just don't. That's uh, so anybody coming in, it's like, okay, we want to make this. I would like to think we would like to make this team better. We'd like to make this team. I would like to appreciate my asset, um, you know, at the very least. And, you know, he comes in, he says, you know, having, having change within the league, you know, again, making things more fair for everybody is a big start. Uh, I want to hit Travis real quick. It says, Red, today they're going to have an NFL game in Frankfurt. And we had a, our, uh, from, from Unc Shea came in from mm-hmm. near there with a, a nice super this uh, already today. So thank you again. And Travis, thank you for the stars. Uh, is it possible to have uh, expansion overseas in the future? Possible. Yes. Practical. But I think you're better off seeing more of like a, a separate league, not necessarily NFL Europe, but kind of. Um, and then, you know, maybe have a World Bowl. You know, I mean, it, it, if you're thinking, and I don't think this is going to happen anytime in our lifetime in the next generation, but I think we'll see a team in Mexico before we'll see a team in Europe. Um, it's just too hard for the West Coast teams, you know, f- to get over and play a team in Frankfurt, Germany um, with doing that, you know, as a, you know, once every couple of years to go over to London and play is one thing to go and try and do that four times a year for a yeah. divisional opponent 
that becomes real tough. So maybe you expand an entire division and they only play East Coast games where it's not that bad. I don't know. Is it possible? Anything's possible. Anything's I think it, possible. I think it takes away from the parody of, of the NFL if you start making it an inordinate burden on specific teams in the league to travel. And and, and I guess it's not just specific team, a specific team or two, but the opponents having to travel, that's a hop, skip, and a jump, man. But you know what? The NFL continues to be intent on tapping into the European market because the Europe's rich, man. There's a lot of money in Europe. There's a lot of money to be made there if you can get people in Europe actually interested in the NFL. The problem, one of many problems with the with NFL Europe, Scott, was that the product wasn't good enough mm-hmm. to really excite and interest um, Europeans at a uh, at a high high enough level to justify it ever going any further. And I, before I lose sight of this, I just wanted to say I didn't get a chance to say. Michaela, love you. Appreciate you. So generous. You to bomb. You know this. We can't say that enough. You never have to apologize for for that. Uh, we got another legendary super chat superstar jumping in off the top rope, and, and oh, and by the way, here he is, Kayaka. Dude, where you been, big dog? Where have you been? Uh, you and I have a conversation. We need to finish up. In fact, I was just thinking about you the other day. Uh, we do need to get together and talk about that thing that we were talking about. Kayaka is quality people hung out with him literally all day at the meet and greet watched the game together in the stands became a buddy became a friend not just community guy so anyway great to see you thank you for the super been wondering about you he says aloha gents i'm excited for the fresh young staff taking shape although this season i'm staying a bit neutral in lieu of my excitement early last season lol (laughs) hope we re-sign kenny young over anyone you know what was interesting scott on this topic is, you know, going back to the names that uh, George Payton brought up in that team site interview on the linebackers, Kenny Young, who is also an unrestricted free agent. He didn't mention him. His name did not come up in those remarks, which tells me that for whatever reason, he's probably not front of brain for George Payton. Josie Jewell was AJ was, and even Baron Browning and, and Jonas Griffith were more front of brain than bringing up Kenny Young for whatever reason. I don't know. Maybe a midseason acquisition that poo pooed the fact that he had to come to Denver. That didn't help right off right. the bat. Now, if he True. holds a grudge like this Irishman, it would have it would have uh, it would have made a difference. Kyaka, thank you for the super. We haven't met, but I, I hope we will someday. And same goes for our old GLP, Gary Leeds Palmer. Thanks, Chad and Scott, for the great content. Thank you. Thank you for being here. It's it's an honor. I, I say it all the time and, and not enough. It's an honor uh, that y'all trust us. We've got almost 400 people watching right now contributing to the chat, the show, that y'all take your time and trust us with yours because we know how valuable time is to each and every one of you. So thank you. Top rope, two Hawaiian OG legends, back-to-back Super Chats, Kayaka and D-Dub, Dale, a.k.a. the man, the myth, the legend. Dude, thank you so much. So generous. I mean, it's sometimes hard for us to wrap our brain around just how great our community is thank you so much my brother i'm gonna be in your neck of the woods as i mentioned both you and kayak i'm gonna be in your neck of the woods in march i'm gonna be in hawaii on the big island so we'll have to uh, see if we can't find a way to meet up i'll be there for about a week but he says impact i want an impact player at any position at nine Mm -hmm. regardless of position impact players make everyone else better and or others jobs easier including the coaches a guy that wrecks the plans on the other side of the ball, your impact players in this draft, great job. You to Mandale. Scott, you were at the Senior Bowl, and I know there's obviously a lot more to this conversation than just the seniors in this class, but what's your answer for Dale? Yeah, we could we could go for this one for a while. Um, and, you know, when, when D-Dub's throwing down red supers, uh, we'll, we'll spend some time on this one. So the nice thing is, unless you go quarterback, you can get an impact player. Even if you go wide receiver with someone like Trayvon Burks, I think he's an impact guy. Uh, wide receiver out of Arkansas, 210 pounds, running 4-3 supposedly. Um, I think you could get a another corner, a long-term running mate for uh, for Pat Sertan, and then you got two lockdown guys. Um, and you could get Sauce Gardner out of Cincinnati could be at that spot. Uh, Derek Stingley Jr. could be at that spot. Andrew Booth could be there. 
And there's quite, I have questions. I don't feel like there is, a, and there's no, I, I say there's no sure thing. There's never a sure thing. Don't get me wrong. But at the edge, there's guys from Aiden Hutchinson to Kayvon Thibodeau on down where any one of those guys could end up being superstars. And any one of them could end up being Tack McKinley, who just kind of meh disappears. There's a lot of risk there, but there's a lot of reward. You could get your tackle. There's tackles in that spot. Um, I don't know that you want to go defensive tackle this high, nose guard, Jordan Davis. But if I go, I, I can name five edge rushers that could be in that spot. Uh, from George Karloftis to David Ajabo to Jermaine Johnson to Sam Williams out of Ole Miss. Keep an eye on that kid and what he does mm -hmm. at his pro day in the combine. He was a bouncy freak down at the Senior Bowl. Um, so I'm really Really excited. I know people say, oh, they're, they're poo-pooing this draft. I disagree. I think the top five, there's question marks there. And that's why people are kind of poo-pooing this draft. You're almost better off drafting five to 10, six to 10, because it costs you about two-thirds the money, but you've got just as good a chance of getting a great player. So it's a good draft to have a lot of picks. It is so deep on the defensive line, which I love. So D-Dub. Nine six seven three four. I lived in nine zero zero nine four for about nine years, so not too far from you. So, uh, thank you so much. Yeah, I, we certainly appreciate it. Absolutely. I think. Look, I if you're not going to go quarterback, to me, and I get it. Oh no, best player available. Best player available. The best player available thing is always relative to the positions we need. You know, GMs scouting departments, they're going to put their board together and they're going to prioritize it based on the holes and weaknesses and per, not just necessarily weaknesses today, but whatever, you know, contracts are coming off the books over the next four or five years. I still boiling it back down to positions. It's right tackle. It's, it's edge for the value. Look, you don't know what you're going to do with Bryce Callahan yet. You don't know what you're going to do. I mean, Kyle Fuller's not coming back, but You've got Ron Darby on another couple of years. He's here for sure for one more year and Pat Sertan. So you got two of those positions solved. I don't think you would really necessarily need to go corner at nine, but you could. There are some guys that some role players that are under contract for 2022 that are interesting to me. But um, for me, it comes back, Scott, to tackle. It comes back to edge if you're not going to take a quarterback. And I'm not pounding the table for a quarterback just because no one yet has given me the Warm and fuzzies. Judah Walker jumping in. We got a rapid fire because we just crossed the 50-minute mark. Judah Walker. Cam Akers, six-month rehab from a torn ACL is amazing. Uh, that work ethic, is it the work ethic or medicine? 32 the year at least. Uh, I'm not sure the syntax on the ed end of that one, Scott, but yeah. But it changed, it's changed a lot. It has gotten better. Now, depending on the damage to your ACL for a quick twitch guy and a change of directions, it could be up to a full 18 months before you're 100 percent uh but a a 90 percent cam acres is still a lot better than most everybody else so you can get back out there in six months so if he's good now give him another year also um mike ronquillo appreciate you big dog george payton did also mention melvin gordon who he, he brought up his fumbles but he also brought up how much he liked the one-two punch and just kind of the juju he had with javante and then said that he loves him. He used the word love. So that's something that if Nathaniel Hackett swoops in and looking at the film, uh, Lana, thank you. Appreciate you. You know, you know, if Hackett comes to the table, in other words, and says, hey, we, I, f I feel like we need Melvin for the wide zone, then they'll make an offer. But uh, time will tell on that. And then here's one. I'm going to serve this over to you, Scott, from John Houston. Thank you, big dog. Pro Football Focus compared Sam Howell to Russell Wilson. Do you like him? Hmm. That's not a bad comp. I don't, I don't remember because uh, Hal goes about 220. He's about six foot, a little bit over six foot, six foot and a half, 220. Uh, Russell Wilson's not quite that big. I think he's probably got a little bit more shake. I think he's got a little bit more shake. Russell's got a little bit more, uh, you know, a little more lateral to him. Um, but that's not a bad comp with, uh, with Sam Howell. I like Sam Howell. I do. Um, and the fact that he's like 21 years old, where he's three years younger than Kenny Pickett, interests me as well. Fast forward Sam Howell three years from now, where is he on the Kenny Pickett scale? You know, this this age thing, it, it, it makes a difference. It really does.
It doesn't to college guys because they're only getting them for three or four years anyway. I'll take a guy from 21 to 24. But if I'm drafting a quarterback, I'd rather have the 21-year-old than the 24-year-old if it's close. Yeah. John says Locke would be a top five pick in this draft, to be honest. I don't think so. I really don't. There were too many questions about him. Um, he was he was too much of a hot and cold quarterback for any <laughs> NFL team, even in this class, I think, to uh, – Andrew, you noticed? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Scott's been dealing with an ideal for the last three days, four days. Four Started days. Friday night, actually. Oh, okay. That's right. That's right. Um, so appreciate the concern, obviously, Andrew. He says, uh, keep a hot compress on that eye, Scott. I had many styes working with fiberglass, but talking to Nick and Carl, they feel Javante Williams, Pookie, might have a hard time in Nathaniel Hackett's game uh, you know, playbook because of his vision. With that, should Gordon stay? I think too much gets made out of that, to be honest with you, but your thoughts on Javante in the wide zone, Scott? When, when we're, it's a talking point, really. It, it, it is. It's like, okay, who are you concerned about? That might be it, because he's a, he's not necessarily a patient. You know, that's what we saw to Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon will take a breath. He's got the the experience to know if I'm patient, something will open up, and I trust myself to be able to get to it. I saw that from John Javante Williams towards the end of the season. I saw him get experience and take leaps and bounds. So uh, I think if you ask them uh, what you thought and ask them when they come back on, when they ask uh, you know, Nick and Carl, what do you think? Do you think he can do it? Do you think he will be successful? Uh, my guess is the they're going to say yes. They're going to say, yeah, he's going to be successful. But it's just something to watch out for. George, appreciate you. Uh, you the man, big dog, really do appreciate that. Maybe I sounded a little too dismissive a little too first world on my Super Bowl comment. I would definitely go. Uh, that's just not my first love. That's not what I got into uh, this business for. I'm not. That's not what really floats my boat, so to speak. Being being where the action's at. Uh, Phil jumping in to say, "Evening, Chad and Scott. Any thoughts on getting Desmond King in free agency? Might be a good addition to the slot, Scott." I don't. I don't have any thoughts on that one at all. I apologize. I, I'm not overly familiar with uh, with with him as a player. He's okay. He had he had one or two decent years. Um, yeah, but they're going to have to do something. I would definitely be open to examining him, but I don't know. Fangio's gone, so maybe Bryce tries to follow him, but uh, I would definitely try and get Bryce Callahan in here. But it's a little bit of a pick back in here, a little bit of a pickle, though, because his value, you know, he's, he's, he has a hard time staying on the field. So how do you value him in a contract? But when he's on the field, he's a top two or three slot corner in the league. Uh, Tom El Greco up in Canada. What's up? Good to see you, bro. Hey, guys, if Locke won the last three games, would we be talking about other quarterbacks? Thanks, boys. Uh, well, look, if Locke won the final three games, one of those wins would have been against the Kansas City Chiefs. And uh, that would have been monumental in terms of hype ending this season. Um, I still think the whole Aaron Rodgers thing, the whole Nathaniel Hackett connection, that would still be the main talking point, but uh, he would have done a lot to help himself had he uh, managed to pull that off. All right. This guy would have for sure, would have for sure. I'm still hearing about this four and one stretch in five games where he threw seven touchdowns and three interceptions as if it was godlike <laughs> with about an 85 quarterback rating. Okay. He didn't win those games. So if he goes out and throws four touchdowns a game for three games, he goes 12 and one on touchdowns and interceptions. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. If he goes out and throws two touchdowns in three games with no turnovers and they win 17 to 13, I'm still looking to upgrade the quarterback position. Doesn't mean I will, but I, and you should, be, you should always be looking to upgrade every position. Don't get me wrong. But again, the quarterback play has been so poor in Denver right now that we're, we're, we're going, we're revising history. We really are. <laughs> Juero, good to see you, my friend. Appreciate you. Scott has been a great addition to the pod. Keeps thinking logical when we get emotional. Scott <laughs> is really good at that. Uh, that's also why he and Nick make a good team. They're both kind of pragmatic, analytical thinkers. Also, shout out to Dylan in the chat for keeping us in check when emotional. Appreciate that, Juero. Uh, Gerald Hill, very generous super chat. Great Dude, to see you, my thank friend. You, Gerald. He likes Trevor Penning at nine. 
the tackle from uh, uh, Northern Iowa. Northern Iowa. I just Chad, I just posted his video on my channel. I could share it here if you want to see a couple, couple plays. Yeah, get it, get it queued up, and I'll grab a few more here. And he likes Jewel and Johnson, uh, and Rock with Lock. We'll see, buddy. We'll see. We're about out of time though. Uh, we got to stay pretty uh, on the nose for the one hour mark because it is my wife's B day. Got to be a good husband. Oh I gotta, goodness, I gotta go yeah, get you that do. Done. Um, Judah Walker, but I want uh, let's get let's get that queued up, Scott. Um, here's so, Trevor. And this Penny. is actually him at guard. Which doesn't get talked about enough. How tall is he? He's six seven, and that's Perry on Winfrey. He just buried Perry on Winfrey. Had an amazing week. This is him at left tackle, and you see he's a little he's a little on the nasty side. He about he slung yeah, him down. I he about that, killed dude. Desmond Ritter on that play because he I threw it right that. into his legs. But here he is again at guard. Which, like I said, that doesn't get talked about enough. He's six foot seven. You see how low to the ground he is. Boom. So I think he's going to go a lot raw. higher than people he's think. He's not quite the athlete that Spencer Brown is, but he's powerful. And this he's is a 220 be... pound linebacker that he's, you know, that that is coming off that. Those guys are hard to deal with in those one on one type situations. So, yeah, Trevor Penning is definitely someone, someone to keep an eye out for sure. Judah Walker, if Vaughn wins another Super Bowl MVP, do you think he'll be the GOAT of defensive players? I mean, no. No. <laughs> but he already is a goat of you're, you're talking about rushers. someone who you're talking about someone who grew up with LT. Yeah. You know, I grew up with the 56. I grew up with Lawrence Taylor. Lawrence Taylor is arguably the greatest football player of all time, period. Still um, the, the I last don't think defensive, he is, but uh, I certainly put him in the argument. LT, if I'm not mistaken, also still the last defense player to win league MVP. Uh, Eight six. He, he, he changed. I, you know, talk about uh, me and Nick said, you know, I grew up when linebackers were cool, you know, Mike Singletary, uh, yeah. Lawrence Taylor, and he doesn't like linebackers at all. So we, we differ there. Lawrence, and we got to get going guys. So how can Byron Allen buy the Broncos only being worth 400 million? Da, 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 uh, because he'll get a buying group together. He'll get a conglomerate of investors to uh, scratch together the, the money and he'll be the point guy slash, you know, in his case, probably shake it out to where he is majority owner. So, what would you need, Scott? Maybe ten to twelve other investors. I think you need ten percent in order to be like the the shot caller. Yeah, is what it is. Even if it's just one other guy, you've got to be in there. You've got to have ten percent skin in the game. That's why we talk about the Mannings. You know, the Mannings don't have it, but if they can come up with four hundred million between them, five hundred million between them, then they are uh, there. They can become the shot callers, so to speak. Someone else might be the money. Yep. You know, hey, listen, I'm a billionaire and I want to make another billion. Here's 3 billion, turn it into 5. Okay. You know, you do that by buying an NFL franchise. I don't want to run it. I don't know anything about this game. You do it. On Twitch. Always want to get at least one Twitch in on the chat each and every night. Ral RAL Blitz, Ral Blitz. Can you really see as many franchise cues on the market in Kyler Wilson and Rodgers? Surely we swing for the fences on any one of them. Even Garoppolo is the best option. The market has seen in a while apart from Brady and Stafford. Well, none of the names you mentioned are free agents, including Garoppolo. Garoppolo's under contract. Mm -hmm. So uh, that changes, that alters the equation. Now, Brady, he was a free agent. Stafford, he had to be traded, but uh, I don't think Kyler's leaving Arizona. Uh, I don't think Wilson's leaving Seattle. I still think it's 50 50. Rogers leaves, man, maybe 60 40. He stays, but it's, I still think that's a, very open possibility. Scott, we're going to grab Nathan because we got to get out of here. 2022 draft in Las Vegas, 2023 draft in Kansas City. Do you think Denver has a shot to host the draft since they don't seem to be a Super Bowl destination? Scott, your thoughts? I think the weather is too big of a concern for the Super Bowl. You know, when you can run into, we had an ice storm here in 2000 in Atlanta and they swore they'd never come back here. Yeah, but he's talking draft. A blizzard in Denver. Could you get could you get the draft in Denver? Right, right. That? So yes, so that's a good way to try and make that up. However, if the draft is in end of April, that should be safe. You know, I'm thinking combine, which is you know that hell that's big time snow season in Denver. You know, in March. Um, so Denver. yeah, I think that would be a good way to again we talk about what's fair and what's not to help balance that out. So you can't get a Super Bowl, but yeah, let's let's throw you a, let's throw you a draft for sure. Scott, can you? Can you see if you can find Lawrence Rivera's question? 
Um, I'd hate to have to kick that can down the road till tomorrow, even though he said it's cool if you do. I want to try and grab that before we go. Yeah, if you can tell me what time, it makes it real easy. You want to say thanks again to to Michael again, real quick, coming in with some some uh, some stars. One of the Lawrence's questions was, how would he rank compared to other owners' wealth? Well, when you consider, um, I don't know if that was the one, Lawrence. You you have a couple of questions in here, um, but how would he rank? Uh, among other owners' wealth, you consider they're lumping in the franchise as part of their wealth. You know, part of Jerry Jones's wealth is the fact that he owns all of that Dallas Cowboys stuff. Right. He would, uh, as a minority owner, I mean, they're straight up. I mean, the Daniel Snyders, as you mentioned, Jerry, the Kraft. I mean, there, there's Ch- Shad Khan, uh, the new guy, I forget his name, David, whatever, in Carolina, David. Uh, yeah, true billionaires. So as far as the scratch net worth, he'd be uh, he'd be small potatoes individually compared to some of the billionaire boys in the club. But uh, guys, we gotta we gotta bounce on out of here. Appreciate each and every one of you for spending some time with Scott and I here on the Huddle Up podcast. An eleventh hour super chat from Plum Bob. Appreciate that. He said Scott said early in the show that he's a big soccer fan. Just wanted to say go Liverpool. I don't know how you feel about that. Oh, there you go. He's not, uh, no, he's not actually, down for that. I actually like Liverpool is a fun team to watch. They're a good team. If you're going to start a team to watch right now, they play a fun version of the game. I'm a, I'm a Chelsea fan, but you know, I'm, I'm new to the game. I'm new to international football. So I didn't grow up hating Liverpool or anything. Um, and people from, we won't talk soccer anymore. Liverpool is okay with me. I'm a Chelsea guy. Dude, I'm just, I'm just breaking your cojones. It's all good. You don't need to, <laughs> you don't need to worry about it. Um, guys, before we get on out of here, We'll do an update tomorrow. Um, we kind of got carried away in the conversation. We'll do an update tomorrow on where things stand for the Facebook Stars contest raffle and the Super Chat uh, rankings. For now, we want to tip our caps to Joshua throwing down Stars That was tonight. the big one. Big dog. Thank you. Michael, Travis, Shane, Lana, Rodney, Leaf, Gary, Phil, Andrew, Lawrence Rivera, George DeAngelis. We missed DeAngelis and Tommy Wyatt Horning, much love and respect to each and every one of you. Don't forget to follow the podcast on Twitter at Huddle Up Pod. Make sure you're following us on Facebook. All right. Facebook.com slash Mile High Huddle. You can choose to become a supporter if you click the big blue button on our Facebook page. And that actually gives you access to our three VIP podcast shows each and every week, including Broncos Book Club with yours truly, The Trickle Zone, and Kelberman's Corner. And then also, guys, we really need you to go give the Huddle Up Podcast Facebook page a follow. Big plans for that page. Uh, And then a shout out here, and we'll dip on out to these great superstars for the support tonight. Unk Shea, Rod TV, Kevin, Wilson the Ghost, T-Man, Nathan, Dennis, the Duchess, Judah, Kayaka, John Houston, Tom, Huero, D-Dub the Legend, Gerald, uh, and Nathan again, Plum Bob. Much love and respect. Scott, any, uh, he's saying here, let's get a tackle, maybe two to DeAngelis. Let's get yeah, this O-line scouting sense. strong. And Kiaka mentioned some names. I want to throw one more. If Kyle Hamilton, the safety, ends up falling to nine because people get prejudiced against safeties, you want Kyle Hamilton. Bring him in. I don't care where you play him. Put him at edge. Put him at edge, but get Kyle Hamilton. But DeAngelis, yes, I think you should come out of this with out of this draft with at least two offensive linemen, at least two including maybe, uh, you know, an interior line. To, to You want an interior and an, an edge guy, so a tackle and a guard center for me. Guys, follow Scott on Twitter, at Scout Kennedy. You can follow me, at Chad N. Jensen. Follow Zach Kelberman, at Kelberman NFL. And with that, we're going to dip on out. Go get a five-star rating in, too, for the Huddle Up podcast on Apple Pods. When you do, maybe the Huddle Up podcast is not your favorite show. Maybe you like Broncos for Breakfast the most. Maybe it's Building the Broncos or one of the other shows. It's all under one RSS feed. So when you leave us a a review under the Huddle Up podcast on Apple Pods, it counts for everybody. So go leave us a five-star review and enter yourself into our monthly raffle. All right, we'll raffle that at the end of this month. Scott, thanks for uh, peeling off some time, bro. It was great talking with you. The big beer was uh... Chad and Scott. Yeah, was, I'm glad I could glad I could hop in. Um, if, if we if we didn't get to all of the the supers and stars, we will make it up to you. I promise. Nick and I will be on Broncos for breakfast tomorrow. Uh, just just hit us up, hit us up for sure. Uh, hit us up on Twitter again, and uh, appreciate you having me on, Chad. Great host.
All right, guys, appreciate you, my friend. For Scott Kennedy, for Zach Kelberman, I'm Chad Jensen. We'll see you tomorrow night. We'll see if Zach will be back. Uh, Go Broncos. You've been listening to the Huddle Up Podcast. Join Broncos Country's deep divers at milehighhuddle.com to keep the conversation going.